Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and this is a very important surgeon question and answer session all about pediatric heart valve surgery. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Richard Kim, who's the surgical director of the Garon Family Congenital Heart Program at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. During his extraordinary career, Dr. Kim has performed over 2,000 procedures, of which many have involved some form of valve repair or valve replacement. Dr. Kim, I'm really excited for this conversation. Thanks so much for being with us today. Well, thanks for having me. It's nice to see you. Dr. Kim, before we get into the Q&A all about pediatric heart valve surgery, I've got a question all about you. When and why did you know that you wanted to be a pediatric heart surgeon? I always loved the heart and, and lungs and the physiology when I was in medical school, but but really, when I first saw a, a heart operation, I knew there, there was nothing else that uh, where you could really impact and change a patient's life so dramatically. Um, it was something I, I knew I, I really wanted to be a part of. And then pediatrics was just an extension of that. There, there really was, was nothing that I saw where you could have such a a tremendous relationship with uh, your patients and, and the parents of the, of the children that you were helping. Um, it, the, it became very, very important to me also when I became a parent myself and uh, it made me really appreciate and, and really love to feel in a completely different way. That's a great story, Dr. Kim, about you becoming a parent and really amplifying your passion for this profession. I'm, I'm so thrilled it's worked out for you. And now maybe we can take a step back and ask and answer a question that I'm sure is on a lot of people's minds who are watching this. What That is, what is congenital heart disease? That's a question that comes up a lot, actually. And the difference between congenital and acquired heart disease, which is the adult form of disease, and the one you typically think of, like, for instance, a leaking valve or uh, a heart attack and needing to have a, a heart bypass operation, congenital disease is disease that a child is born with. And so it's a problem of the development of the heart and the valves themselves. Dr. Kim, very helpful in helping us understand about congenital heart disease. Let's talk about some of the valvular disorders and most importantly, the detection of typical types of diseases like stenosis and regurgitation. How does that occur for congenital patients? Congenital heart disease can be detected at many, many different stages in a patient's life. Many times it can be detected in utero with a fetal ultrasound. Usually every child gets an ultrasound around 18 to 20 weeks uh, prenatally. Sometimes it can be detected as soon as the child is born. They, they, all children need a oxygen test. And sometimes when the oxygen is low, it clues us into maybe there's a problem with the heart. And then sometimes children uh, in the school age uh, develop a, a murmur and that can be picked up by their pediatrician. Incidentally, congenital heart disease can present as an adult, and sometimes adults can suffer some of the same problems that the children do, and, and they come in because they're short of breath or they're having difficulty doing some of their activities. And so um, throughout a patient's life, you can really detect, you, there are different stages to detect congenital heart disease. Dr. Kim, it's great to hear about all the ways that you and the Cedars team can detect congenital heart valve disease. And I can remember as a congenital heart valve patient, I had questions like, did I do something wrong to cause this? Or is this genetic? I imagine that there are other patients out there and parents as well who have those questions. Can you talk about that? Adam, I'm, I'm so glad you, you asked this question, Ashley, because it's a question that we see a lot. And, and I would say that overwhelmingly, we actually don't know why children get congenital heart disease. I, I get the question from parents a lot. Did they inherit, inherit the disease from me? Did, is, is there something that, that I passed on and the parents feel a tremendous amount of guilt? 
And although we do know that for some cases of congenital heart disease, there's a genetic component. Overwhelmingly, usually it is not inherited. Dr. Kim, what are the different types of therapies that you and your team might use there to help congenital heart disease patients with valvular disorders? Well, you know, the number of problems that congenital heart surgeons deal with can be vast. And the therapies that we use to address each one of them uh, can range wildly from very small interventions to, to very complex ones where we're moving the great vessels or we're um, transforming the physiology of the heart. Different things like different surgical procedures, combinations of surgical and interventional procedures. Um, really the key is that um, we, as other places, have a tremendous team and working together, we can really offer therapies for just about every congenital heart problem. Dr. Kim, can you share for the parents and the patients out there, what might be some misconceptions about pediatric valve surgery? I think the biggest one is that once you have an operation, that's it, that the heart is going to be fine and um, that the problem is really taken care of. It is really important, particularly in congenital diseases, that the family follow up with their uh, cardiologist and their cardiac surgeon for life. Uh, it really, in, in most cases, is, a, is something that really needs to be treated uh, over a lifetime. Dr. Kim, medicine is these days um, having a series of advances in technologies and procedures and techniques do those evolutions and innovations also apply to pediatric valve therapy? Well, like everything, um, the field is growing and, and the future is very bright. I think some of the things that we've done is, is, is we're able to use devices that are much smaller, for instance, or were you able to use devices in combination with interventional approaches and surgical approaches? Uh, one example is, is using a, a dilatable valve or a valve that you can make bigger and use it in the mitral valve location. Obviously, one of the biggest problems with operating on children is that children grow and valves generally do not. But using, uh, kind of applying some of these interventional techniques, like putting a dilatable valve in the mitral valve position and then allowing it to dilate over time, you know, we're, we're able to help mitigate some of the potential problems that children face as they grow. Dr. Kim, for the parents out there who are watching this and might actually be struggling a bit with this news that their kids have some form of conge congenital heart valve disease, do you have any advice for them? This is really important, I think. Um, the first thing is, is that you're not alone. Um, number two is take your time and don't be afraid to ask any questions of the team and, and really, uh, it's okay to be thoughtful and to be, um, even a little selfish in terms of deciding the treatment plan. It is your child. Um, and then finally that congenital heart disease is a lifelong disease. Uh, it's a disease that really needs to be followed by an experienced team over the lifetime of your child. Dr. Kim, on behalf of the entire community of heartvalvesurgery.com, thanks so much for taking time away from your very busy practice there at Cedar sinai to share this very important information about congenital heart disease with our community. Thanks so much. Thank you, Adam. I really enjoyed it. Take care, Dr. Kim. Bye-bye. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen, or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.